Hey, welcome to Mini Beginner's Crash Course. My name is Lisa Jung, and I'm a developer advocate at Elastic. This course is for developers who want to get started with Elasticsearch and Kibana. In Season 2, we're building a full-stack JavaScript app that can search for earthquake data stored in Elasticsearch. In the previous episode, we set up Elasticsearch for data transformation and data ingestion. We created the earthquake data pipeline for data transformation, we also created an index called earthquakes with a desired mapping. And this is where the transform earthquake data will be indexed. In this episode, we'll set up the server to retrieve earthquake data from the USGS API, then send the retrieved data to Elasticsearch Earthquake Data Pipeline. The server will also instruct Elasticsearch to ingest the transform data into the earthquakes index. So let's talk about the relevant resources for this episode. All the links to these resources are included in the description box. Throughout the episode, I'll be going over terminal commands and code. If you want to copy and paste these, check out part 7 of the blog series as these are all included there. Next, we have a GitHub repo for episode 7. So check out branch 4 for the project directory from this episode. Okay, so before we get started, I want to give a huge shout out to Mark Mayfield. I came across his blog when I was figuring out how to retrieve and ingest API data into Elasticsearch. His blog was instrumental in helping me create episode 7, so thank you Mark. Now I've modified the code shared in Mark's blog to fit our use case. I've also broken down the code line by line for easier understanding. All right, let's set up our server to retrieve earthquake data from the USGS API. So pull up the earthquake app directory using your code editor. Then within the server directory, create a directory called data management. And within this directory, create a file called retrieve and ingest data.js. Now this file will instruct the server to execute three things. Upon receiving an HTTP request, retrieve earthquake data from the USGS API, then send the retrieved data to Elasticsearch Earthquake Data Pipeline for data transformation, then instruct Elasticsearch to ingest the transformed data into the earthquakes index. In the retrieve and ingest data.js, paste the following code, and this code can be found in blog part 7, step 1. So let's go over the code. Lines 1 through 3 require dependencies necessary to receive and send HTTP requests. In line 4, we require the Elasticsearch client we created in episode 4. In line 5, we require a dependency called log timestamp we installed in episode 2. It prepends timestamps to the messages displayed in the terminal via the console.log method. Now you'll see this dependency come into play when we retrieve data from the USGS API. In line 7, we create a constant called URL and set it equal to the URL of the API called all earthquake data from the past 30 days. Now we'll be retrieving data from this API. Next, we use lines 9 through 77 to define what our server should do when it receives an HTTP request to the forward slash earthquakes endpoint. In line 9, we define a route for forward slash earthquakes. When the server receives an HTTP request to this endpoint, it displays the message loading applications in the terminal. We use lines 13 through 77 to retrieve earthquake data from the USGS API, create an object for each earthquake, and send the objects to Elasticsearch Earthquake Data Pipeline for data transformation, and instruct Elasticsearch to ingest transform data into the earthquakes index. In line 13, we define a function called index data. Let's look at line 15. When this function is called, it prints the message retrieving data from the USGS API in the terminal. Using line 17 through 21, we send a GET request to the USGS API. In line 23, we display the message data retrieved in the terminal. In line 25, we create a variable called results. This variable is set equal to the retrieve earthquake data from the API. Now we cover the API data structure in part 5. As you could see, earthquakes.data.features gives you access to the features array. This array contains earthquake objects containing the information that we want. In line 27, we display the message indexing data in the terminal. 
lines 29 through 55, runs through an array of earthquake objects. For each earthquake object in the array, it creates a JSON object that will be indexed later as documents. In lines 56 through 61, we use our instance of Elasticsearch client to send the retrieve API data to Elasticsearch for data transformation and data ingestion. In line 56, we use a client.index method to index the transform data. In line 57, we specify that the data should be indexed into the earthquakes index. In line 58, we give each earthquake document an ID identical to the ID of the earthquake object retrieved from the API. We do this to keep the earthquake ID from the USGS API and the document ID to stay consistent. In line 59, we set the body equal to earthquake object we define lines 31 through 55. The body represents a document of one earthquake. In line 60, we instruct the Elasticsearch client to send the retrieved data to earthquake data pipeline, and this pipeline will transform the data in the manner we specified in episode 6. Then Elasticsearch will index the transform data into the earthquakes index. In lines 65 through 67, we state that if there's still data left that has not been indexed, then keep calling the index data function. If all data has been indexed, then print data has been indexed successfully in the terminal. If an error occurs during indexing, then print the error in the terminal. After data ingestion has been completed, print the message preparing for the next round of indexing in the terminal. In line 76, we call the index data function. In line 79, we expose a router via node.js module exports as this will be used in server.js. Next, we'll add the data ingestion route to server.js. So open server.js, then paste the following code into lines 8 and 10. And this code can be found in blog part 7. In line 8, we create a constant called data and require the retrieve and ingest data.js from our data management directory. When the server receives an HTTP request from a URL path that starts with forward slash ingest data, the function we defined in retrieve and ingest data.js is executed. All right, so let's test this to see if this works. So using your terminal, cd into the earthquake app directory, then execute npm start to start your server. Next, you'll open a new browser here and arrange the terminal and the browser side by side. In the address bar, paste this URL out here and this URL could be found in blog part 7. Now, when you click on enter, pay close attention to the terminal here. You'll see these messages in the terminal acknowledging that the data is retrieved it's indexing the data, data has been indexed successfully, and is preparing for the next round of indexing. Now you'll also see the timestamp prepended to the messages printed in the terminal. Now if you look at your browser, you'll see the message running application printed here. All right, let's see if the data has been properly transformed and ingested into Elasticsearch. One of the ways to view data in Elasticsearch is via Kibana Discover tool. With Discover, you can quickly search and filter your data, get information about the structure of these fields, and display your findings in a visualization. You could also customize and save your searches and place them on a dashboard as well. In order to use Discover, we need to specify where it can find the data we want to explore. And we do so by creating a data view. A data view allows you to specify the data source you want to explore so that Kibana could find this data. From the Kibana homepage, click on the Stack Management option. From the Stack Management page, click on the Data Views. Then click on the Create Data View button. And you'll see that the index earthquakes is listed as one of our data sources. Under the name section, type in earthquakes. Now, Discover also allows you to explore data in various time ranges. And since our earthquake data is in time series, we'll be able to use the time range feature of Discover. And since earthquake data has a timestamp field called add timestamp, Kibana will automatically update the timestamp field with the field add timestamp. Next, click on the create data view option. You'll see that a data view called earthquakes has been created. 
Next, click on the menu icon, then click on the Discover option. This will take you to the Kibana Discover tool. You'll see that the date of your earthquakes has been already selected, and the message, no results match your search criteria, is also displayed on the screen. Now, let's see why we're encountering this message. So take a look at the time range. Discover is currently being instructed to display data that has been collected within the last 15 minutes. And since our index does not contain such data, we encounter a message that no results match our search criteria. So let's adjust to our timeline to last 30 days to view the results. Click on the calendar icon. There's a drop down menu where you can select the time range in which you want to view the data. Select the last 30 days option. You'll see that in the index earthquakes, there are 9,108 documents that have been indexed from the USGS API. The table displays documents within the earthquakes index. Each row displays information about a document. So let's take a look at the document to see if the data was properly transformed before being ingested into Elasticsearch. Now, when you click on the arrow, it'll show you the document content, and you'll see that the document contains the desired fields. It also has a timestamp format we have specified in episode 6. In this episode, we retrieved earthquake data from an API and sent the data to Elasticsearch for data transformation and data ingestion. And now that we have data in Elasticsearch, it's time to set up our app for search. In the next episode, we'll build a client with React so the users could specify the earthquake data that they're searching for. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode.